Um, okay, so these are some of the pictures which was edited recently. Um, so let me just uh, just drag open, drag and drop on that. Either drag and drop or click on open, and click on the uh, browse to the location. And click on that. Now the first thing which opens is called camera raw. Okay, this is a mode which comes in um, in uh, Photoshop. Okay. Uh, now this mode is separate from Photoshop itself, so you can see the Photoshop layout is downstairs, mm -hmm. and this one is a layout on top of it. Which means before opening the photo in the Photoshop, you can post process this picture. Now, if you remember, uh, there were certain uh, certain things I said you about white balance and picture control, mm -hmm. but I said you can configure it later when you have a raw file, right? Yeah. This is what it is. This you see on the first two settings is basically the white balance. Okay. I said you white balance, there are three types of whites available. Do you oh. know the three types of white? Oh, so what's the color of white? Do you know what's the color of white? Uh, sorry, what's the color of light? White. It's white, right. So uh, basically what, uh, there are three colors to it in the, okay. in the light. Okay. The one when the sun comes out, the one oh, when yeah, the sun okay. sets, and the one when the sun is in the middle. In the middle yeah. yeah. So the three types of whites. Now you can s you. I'm gonna adjust this temperature to different levels, and you're gonna tell me whether the sun is setting or raising. Okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna go over here. What the is sun it? setting? Sure. Mm. And what about this one? The sun's rising. No, at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's. I think it's blue, right? Yeah. The blue color comes when the sun is rising up, okay. right? It's a uh, it's what we call it as cool blue or cool white, okay? Right, and then we in the middle is where the uh, actual sunlight like it like Sounds white, okay. yeah, white actual white or bright white, uh, and then yellow white or the warm white we call it, okay? Okay, so these are the white balances, okay? Do you need to balance it accordingly? So if I go for the blue color, you get a different tone over here. If I go to yellow color, you get a different tone over here. And, and if I put middle, you get a tone over there. So it, it is up upon your personal interest and choices how you want to keep this one up. Okay. The other one is tint. Tint can be like greenish tint or the purplish tint. Okay. okay. So you can adjust this one. So if I put it greenish and I put it yellow, right, it gives a different effect itself. Okay, and bluish, right? It gives an effect. Okay, so you you have to manage the tint accordingly. Normally, we leave it in the middle, towards the greenish. If uh, you have any greeneries on the background or something like that, we put it like little more greenish tint, okay. so it'll give you a nice appeal over the picture. Or uh, if it is like a human picture, we just make it like a little bit between. So you're supposed to match this with the background also. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay, so I put it in the middle for both of them, and I made it a nice uh, pinkish uh, flavor I've given to her. Okay, you can see that little bit pink is all yeah. over there. There's a little bit of yellowish uh, tint also you can see in this picture. Um, so this is much better. I, I This is what my feel is about. Okay, now this automatic and default is basically the, the configurations over here. Okay. So this configuration completely. Mm -hmm will go automatic or default or you can customize it okay automatic means computer will tell you which is the best thing but again uh, a factor you can see that over here this is the right end this is the left end okay so when you put a default it will be all middle mm. however your picture is clicked okay so you can either move it to the left side or the right side. Now I'm going to move a factor towards the left side. I'm going to move the factor towards the right side. Okay. Now you're going to tell me what happens to the picture. Okay. Now let me, before I go ahead with this one, I'll tell you about one thing which you have to understand. The, when before clicking the picture, you want to know the result of the picture, how the picture is going to come. Uh, so we use a setting called metering, which I'll tell you in the outdoor. But you understand, right? Yeah. Before clicking the picture, so this is the, the middle where you are about to click the picture. So before clicking the picture, we call it metering. metering. That comes in your camera. Okay. After clicking the picture, you want to see how the picture is. Uh, not by your eyes, but by the camera's hist uh, values. Okay, it's called histogram. Mm -hmm. So 
left side is metering and right side is histogram now we have clicked the picture already now you want to see how it is so we need to see the histogram histogram is right on top of it mountains do you see yeah different colors it basically tells you three different colors red green and blue that's a whole standard of this one rgb okay the entire thing forms a little bit of here a little bit of there becomes another color a little bit of there a little bit of here becomes another color so you can simulate like most of the colors in rgb format itself now uh, that, that is mentioned over here and you can see uh, the aperture number shutter speed iso and the focal length okay okay in here itself okay so that that's that's the use of rafa rafa carries the metadata uh, which can be process useful for post processing wherein it will know about the history of the picture which was taken that's the one of the best use of a raw uh, rafa um so uh, you can see the histogram here the histogram has two sides okay yeah you have uh, x axis and y axis Okay. So you have these two sides, and you can see the the left and the right corners. Okay. okay. So um, we call the left corner as. So in the metering, uh, if it goes to the left side, what it is called, and it says minus there. Mm, or in histogram or metering. Anything. If it is a negative. Ah, if it's a negative, what does it mean? dark color you said dark no light or no light do is that a technical term dark no light sounds like a lame man talking oh, trying to talk oh is that when the aperture comes in no maybe <laughs> <laughs> no under exposed under exposed. exposed so we call it the exposure Okay, oh. there can be two types of exposure. Okay, I've heard this a long time. You've heard this? Okay, uh, which is good? Good side, the left side or the right side? Like under exposure or if both good both can be good. Both is good. Like even under exposed, like no, uh, somewhere in between. Like no? something. See ya. Right. This is under. So where is the whole graph? Left. Is it good? No. Okay. Not okay. Hard picks, but what about this one? The entire thing is where? The right. Right. Is it good? No. So it should be somewhere so in between. So it should be always in the center. Center. Which is good. Now, why I'm I'm not talking about the settings. I'm talking about this guy. Yeah, I got it. The exposure. So you can see that this guy is a little bit tending towards the left mm -hmm. side. Why? Because you see Please. that oh, there's so on. much of back. 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 black back. Uh -huh. in the back. back. Mm -hmm. So to reduce that, when you put an auto, right, mm -hmm. it puts in a way that everything is in the middle, oh, okay. Okay. which compromises a lot of things over here. You see that bright light here. Huh. Mm -hmm. You see the bright light here. Yeah. You see that a fake light or the hair is becoming disformed. over here mm. this happens when you push your settings beyond 60 percentage is there any settings here which went beyond 60 percentage no 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 sure yeah beyond 40 percentage yeah huh. which one exposure the yeah the highlights and the white highlights so if i just reduce this highlight Mm. If I reduce the shadows, shadows, you can see that it is becoming normal now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see that? Do you yeah. notice it? Yeah. So I'm just reducing the whites as well, which means this white brightness here is also going away. Okay. You have two methods of doing this. Either you just set it automatically, like this, and then adjust it after that mm -hmm. until you get a practice or hold on what this what, or you can just put it default and then do it mm -hmm. yeah. by yourself. Well, uh, So let's see this contrast. How the contrast is. Yeah. Yeah. But it cannot go beyond fifty percent. It's a forty percent. It sometimes you know. Mm -hmm. It's part of the picture. So seventy percent. Just too much highlight in this area. So I'm just reducing it so that it becomes okay. You can also press Alt and then press this one. 
see if I'm going too much highlight, right? It will mm. show me uh, on the negative screen. Okay, now it's okay. not showing, but for white it will show me. Oh, this okay. is the negative side of it. Okay. So you can see that this area is becoming too bright. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how you identify is like holding Alt and holding that key. Okay. Okay, and you can see that those areas over there is being highly exposed. Highly okay. Okay, you see that red line or the white line mm. in the corner mm. is because of those areas. The red is crossing. Okay. Okay. You see the white line yeah. went to the other side completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you just o o notice that white line. I'm just moving it. Okay, it goes away. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, actual what happens in the histogram based on your settings tuning. Okay. So after your settings has been done, the first page is the first page. Uh, once your setting has been done, you should make sure that nothing reaches in the corner. I think that is the corner. The mountain can be this also, mountain can be here also, there also. It means like, you know, some components in your picture is going higher, okay. but that's fine until it touches the either corners of the histogram. Okay. And that's when you have to be very careful yeah. about this. Okay. So once this is done, you can adjust the whites. Get just the shadows and other parts of it, and then get this done with this setting over here. Okay, once the setting is done, this is pretty important. How much the clarity you want in the picture? Like for example, you want the picture to be too much of a clarity. Look at that. Oh no. Okay. okay. Or you can remove the clarity itself. Oh. Okay. Uh, this thing. Uh, one more question I. So, too much of clarity, mm -hmm. the image looks like, you know, suppose if you click a portrait. Hard like rock. HDR. See, sometimes uh, what happens is like, yeah, yeah. Like I've seen that picture on the internet. Uh, an HDR of a port like portrait or yeah. an HDR yeah. mode is this, right? Yes. But uh, we normally have a thing for it. See, if you want a rough and tough picture, you have to increase the clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't want rough and tough picture, you want a heavenly picture, you can reduce it. But this is also can be used for reducing the pimples on the face. Now, you see mm -hmm. that when I'm increasing the clarity. Yeah, it's more prominent. Mm -hmm. You can see that, you can yeah. visibly mm -hmm. see that uh, spots. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the moment I decrease it, right? Mm -hmm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's easy for you to clean up. So what we normally do is like, uh, it's basically what reducing clarity is equal to increasing blur on your picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So the clarity on a high is, see the eye? Yeah. So this is the clarity is there, uh, right? It so reduces now when you right? reduce it, see, see. When you reduce it, you can see that the clarity also goes up. Goes up. Bit. So what we normally do is like, you will select a location mm -hmm. and deselect the eyes from the location mm -hmm. and then apply blur on top of that. Oh, okay. Okay. What happens in this way is like, when you deselect the eyes, then obviously eyes will not be part of the uh, yeah, blurry effect. Right. effect. So we normally put it as zero hmm. and then go inside the picture, select the face, deselect only those things which you want to have the clarity on. Okay. And then blur everything else. And then um, do some little bit of uh, work on the pimples and spots and reduce it. Vibrance is for, so the shortcuts are over here. All it is one shortcut, so it is a zoom in without pressing anything. When you click on it, it will zoom automatically. Hold Alt and click on it, it will be minus. Okay. So you can see that our plus and minus changes over there in the magnetic, uh, sorry, magnification icon there. Yeah, so clarity gets you, sorry, um, Vibrance get you the, the color you wanted okay. or make it a black and white picture as well. Okay. okay. Um, so you can reduce the saturation for the same effect or saturation gets you more color into okay. that same color. But uh, in terms of uh, vibrance, it give you a vibrant image for you to see by adding more color to it. Okay. Um, so here is the same concept, same thing. Highlight, lights, dark shadows. Okay. So basically, if you're not able to do it there, uh, if, if it tries to go beyond 40 percentage, don't go beyond 40 percentage there. Come over here and do it also here. Okay. 
For example, increase this to 30 percentage, mm -hmm. increase this to 30 percentage again, so that you will get a 60 percentage altogether. This is for a spoiled image. I have one image I'll show you. Uh, it's a spoiled image. Mm -hmm. It's like too white. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, how to correct that, I will tell you, but uh, you cannot help it, like most point. But uh, you can try. There's an option called point. There's an option called parameter. Parameter is like basically configured over here. Okay. But on the other hand, point is basically using the graph to configure. You see this graph, right? This mm -hmm. is basically this graph over here. So go to point. Oh. You can okay. just pull it and push it to give it a different effect of this picture. So if you like doing this, you can also do this. Okay. Okay. Next we are to the next setting called details. So basically there are two things we can do. You can either give more sharpening to this picture, like sharpening as in you can see that. The picture is more sharpened. You get the difference? No. No. What's the difference? Um. those dots hmm you the difference now mm -hmm. oh yeah it's getting dark mm -hmm. with it similar to clarity yeah similar to clarity but you get the difference right yeah mm -hmm. so if you have too much of uh, ISO this happens mm -hmm. there will be dots in the picture so what you do is like you use this technique called noise reduction you see that is it going? Yeah. What happens is blurring. It's blurring the picture. Yeah? yeah. Different effect, right? Yeah. So noise reduction reduces the noise on the picture. These are the two effects, okay, in detail. Mm -hmm. The next one is uh, HSL and grayscale. Um, grayscale is nothing but uh, black and white. So when you click on convert to grayscale, you can see the complete picture becomes black and yeah. white. But uh, uh, you can also control the hue, saturation, and luminance in terms of HSL, wherein you can highlight a single color. For example, a lipstick. Okay. So uh, what is the color of a lipstick? Red. Try to find a red color here. Where is the red color here? This one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can decrease the dot color on the left. You see, you see. Oh, okay. You can increase it as well. Mm -hmm. So only that changes. Nothing else. Whatever the reds in the picture will change if it's okay. this red. So selective also we can do? Yes, we can. Okay. okay. Now, what's the color of our skin? Mm. See that? Only yeah. her skin tone Quality. changes. Yeah. She has a blue, mm. dark blue. And the dark blue is not there. And we can use this one, but this is not relevant to that. Okay. So go to the hue and you will find the dark blue here. Okay. You will have it in either luminance or hue or saturation. So you can see that. Changing? Yeah. Mm. Okay, and you have a little bit here as well. No, it's not used. Only okay. this one. Likewise, we control the colors over here um, in a selective manner. Okay, you can alternatively go inside the picture, select a color, and then change the color. That also is possible, uh, but this is from the raw perspective. Okay, without even entering Photoshop. Okay. Uh, this thing uh, so here also we select the portion deselect some portion 
So like there are two reds color and only one I want. So for example, there is something, say reddish dress for example. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to change the color of that dress, red, uh, bright red, mm-hmm. only lips. So I need to deselect the dress. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Um, the next one is that split toning is basically used for the colors in the highlights and shadows. Mm-hmm. But we don't normally can't use it here. So you can skip that one, split toning and go to lens correction. So lens correction is pretty important. Uh, why? Because when you are uh, clicking any picture in the minimum MM, like for example, you have a 1855 lens mm-hmm. and you are taking picture at 18 mm, okay? Mm-hmm. That is something called distortion happens in lens. There are a few problems in lenses, like chromatic abbreviations, distortion, and then you will get a purple haze a lot of problems are there in the lens when it creates a uh, picture. So uh, the expensive lenses doesn't have any of this problem, but the cheap lenses has it. Okay, to correct it, Photoshop gives you an option of doing that. So exactly the distortion is what said because yeah, in like this is what is Lightroom app you have an option. Hmm. Remove distortion, just click it like that. But I don't see much of the changes. Yeah, but because most of the cell phone takes it properly. Okay. Cell phone doesn't have distortion much, but lens has because of the curved nature. Okay. 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 The more you have zoomed out, out, like you're not zoomed in, you're not, uh, mm-hmm. you're not zoomed in on any any of the thing. It's like the base lens will be like this, a little Mostly bit curved you see that inside. In, uh, more prominent we see in a fisheye image. Yeah, facial image is different. Yeah. That is wantonly created with that right. effect. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, now, what I'm talking about is that the normal kit lens. Okay. 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 When you, yeah, any kit lens or even my 2470 also, if I take it in 24mm, it is closer to the outer layer of the lens, which is like a little bit curved. Okay. okay. When you, when you're not zoomed into any of the subject. Okay. So if that is the case, what happens is like the picture comes a little curved oh. okay. and you will not be able to notice that curve at all. I'll show you. I'll show you. I have the Times you need to see it, and then you will get it. Mm-hmm. You got the lens, so you got the camera. It happens in the starting focal length okay. of the picture. Let me if this one happens with the mm-hmm. use this picture. So you just put it inside, it will come inside this picture. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. okay, so you should put it outside the picture so that it opens oh, the individual okay. picture. Now if you see this is uh, this is the normal uh, mm-hmm. lens. Uh, now go to the lens correction. Mm-hmm. So that uh, you can do a manual correction of distortion or you can go to profile correction. Now what is profile correction is like it will 
it will read the camera information. So you can see that over here. It is a 7300mm uh, lens and it is shot in 70mm. 7300 lens at 70mm. So this is the basic mm they have used it. Okay. Do you see a distortion here? Frankly speaking, I don't see any. Uh, if I was an always, but I can see some distortion because I've seen multiple pictures. Okay, so this is automatic way of correcting it. So enable remove chromat chromatic abbreviation and enable profile correction. This is what the two things I give. Mm -hmm. uh, so it says like unable to locate matching lens profile automatically. So okay. I have to select that lens. Okay, this is uh, a Nikon lens, I think. Okay. So uh, here I have to select the lens. These are all the lenses oh, are available. Okay. okay, so here I need to select 7300. Okay, so this is uh, what it is, but it's not able to remove it automatically. So what I do is like I do a manual destruction. It's basically the destruction. You understand? More normally it will be like this mm -hmm. it will become the fatter part of it so what you do is like make it straight you see this looks very straight mm -hmm. the distortion is basically what it will do is like it will, center. it will make the fat at the center, center. yeah because of the lens is like that uh -huh. you see okay. the lens turns oh. that the fat part is in the middle, middle. so it will make it like this so you just reduce it by doing like this a little bit more and there will be a crop applied on top of it. You see the white portions? Yeah. It's because the the picture is moving backward and there is empty space. Yeah, okay, so to remove that we apply a crop on that. So remove the white space and then make it more nicer. So we just do it like this. See this? Now you see that? Okay. This straight picture. Now we applied how much? Plus 9 distortion. Okay. Okay. So in this one, and there is also like, uh, and you will see any pictures uh, online, right? You will see a purple haze mount, purple mm -hmm. haze and green haze happens. So which we can remove. So this is vignetting, okay? You can remove the vignetting, uh, but normally lens creates vignetting. Now see in zero, see darkness here. Mm -hmm. You see a little bit of darkness. Yeah, slightly. So if you remove it, you see that this becomes natural. Now tell me the uh, vignetting number, it's plus 23. Okay, this is also a problem which creates by lens. Oh, by lens? Yes. Oh, I thought it's just an effect. No, no, vignetting is an effect, you can make that happen. See, oh. I'm giving more effect to this. Huh. Mm. So this I thought... It okay, this is effect this comes in effects. Huh. There's an effect step, and that vignetting is that post crop vignetting, so you can make it like this. Huh. Oh. This is effect, but the problem is like the lens gets you vignetting without even you ask for it. Okay. Okay. So you can remove the vignetting by removing it, but the problem is like here you can see that there's an all, so you should be should be able so to. So it's like, like a radial this thing. Oh yeah. Have effect, uh, all these uh, radial effects, right? All these are radial, right? Yes. Means not. Okay. So, um, so these are some of the things like uh, lens correction factors. But if you zoom in a little bit, this thing goes away. Okay. Okay. So if you zoom in a bit. Okay. okay. So normally when you buy a lens, right, you cannot buy just like that. Am I an internal strategy to work? Uh, you need to understand about the lens. Now, how can you understand about the lens? For example, I wanted to buy this lens called... Uh, um, I forgot. So I I took a review on one of the websites. I forgot the name of the website. I wanted to buy one lens. It's Nikon. I think it's a. Sigma at eighty five M one point four. Nikon review. So I go to this website called DP Review. Um, okay. Mm. So this is this lens has been crowded as the 
best lens of uh, 2017. Okay. Um, so this this big it is actually it's oh. huge. Um, so there is one more called image quality and uh, real world uh, example. Okay. So this is the test of the sharpness of the lens. Okay. So here is the 85 lemma. If it's a zoom lens, right, mm -hmm. you can change this to anything. Oh, so but the app right now, you can see that the sharpness is over 2500. So even some of the lenses wouldn't be sharp at uh, the basic amount. Okay, oh. it's becoming sharp at 1.8, it's becoming sharp, more sharp at 2, it's becoming even more sharp at 2.8, it becomes even more sharp at 4, and then see it's going down now. Okay, so you can see that each of this mm -hmm. results in sharpness and you should put it in such aperture which gets you the more sharpness on the picture. More sharpness means more clarity on your picture. More clarity means more details. More details means clearer pictures, vivid pictures, so much. So you need to understand which is the maximum sharpness. And for this one, the maximum reaches at 4 aperture. At 85 more. Okay, when you adding. So when there is no vignetting when the vignetting starts to happen. You can see that. When it's 1.4, there's a vignetting on the corners. Okay. Okay. So it slowly decreases when it goes to 16. Or when it, when it reaches 4, right, there, there's no vignetting. Right? But there is vignetting from 1.4 to 2. So you, you can see the vignetting over mm -hmm. here. Okay. So same thing is distortion. How distorted your picture would be? Mostly none. Because it has only one focal length. If it has a, it's a zoom lens, wow. like for example, 1855 um, lens review. I'll go for 1855 lens. It's a zoom lens. It's a uh, yeah. This one will have. Okay, so I'll just go to the next page. Go to. You see that curve? Yeah. Mm. At 18 mm. you can see that uh, it's going down now. Mm. See, previously it was too much high on the minus side. It went to plus side now. It's going inside. It's going inside more. Right. So which means like the vignetting was there at 18 mm. Okay. A lot of vignetting. You see the curve? Mm. Yeah. So slowly it gets reduced at 28 mm. It becomes straight picture goes like inside out okay so the same thing goes for veneering again sharpness so this is what we check before we buy the lens okay so in 80 mm the sharpness will be different in 50 mm 100 mm the sharpness will be different so we need to understand all these things before we buy it now let me tell you about one more thing called the real world example okay the real world example will get you the real world picture which is taken in the actual world uh, and uh, it will tell you about the, uh, the purple haze. Now, if you see, this picture is so damn good when you compare it with Sony FX. So there are two pictures over here. Uh, one is compared with this lens and one another one is this lens. You see, every picture when I go up and down you can see that uh, This is the this is the building over here. Mm. You can see that. So you see a purple haze? Yeah. There. On the left side. Where? Yeah, left window. The right corner? Here. Mm. Right. So I'm increasing to one point four to two point eight. Now do you see the purple haze? No. Both is sharp, everything mm. is good, right? So I'm going higher to five point six. Okay, I'm going even more higher to 11. See, this has become soft. Now 16. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, given at aperture 104, both of the pictures are going to create some purple haze. This has mm -hmm. more purple haze. You can see the reflection yeah. of the purple haze. This has a little bit purple haze. 
and then when I go to two, you can see it's controlling the purple haze. There is mm. no purple haze here. So these are some of the things you will get to see when you are checking, uh, comparing lenses. Okay, which lens to buy, and uh, which lens you should not buy. Now if we go to the top, right? One going to the top, where you see the antenna was there. You see this one. Mm. The color itself is different. Mm. Do you notice it? Yeah. So when I go to four aperture, you can see a different color completely. This is getting solid, it's getting up there, eight aperture. Mm -hmm. You can see the different in color. So if I go just over to this one, to here. see this? This is the antenna, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go to one dot four again, aperture number, different, this is. You understand what mm -hmm. this means? This means like in every aperture, your results is going to change. Mm -hmm. And that can be done in post-processing. You can just edit them up and make them look nicer. That's what you can do. But this is, these are the things we check before we buy a lens. See the purple haze? Yeah. It's too much purple haze, right? You see the trees. See here, in this area. So these are the things we check before we buy a, a lens. Uh, whether it's a good lens or not. Okay, this is Sony and Sigma comparison. Okay. And, uh, this is how we can understand. Okay, the last uh, configuration is FX, which is special effects, mm -hmm. where you can make the picture to look more hazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then dehaze it. Okay, so you use this effect for any reasons, and this is like grains, film grains. These are like your filters. Yeah. So this uh, gives you film grains on the people's face. Yeah. And this is like the vignetting for mm. effect. Okay. Uh, in, in my picture over here, uh, I will have to do vignetting. But um, you know, one of the settings I've applied over here will be still there, valid, because um, I'll show you why. Okay, so this file is gonna create an XML file. This XML file will hold the values of all those things you changed. Mm -hmm. So when you open this file again, it won't come from the default. It will come from wherever you left over. Okay. Okay. So which means I can go to effect and I can apply the dehaze effect. Oh. Okay. Okay. So when I click on uh, done or open image, it will get saved in this XML file. What happens if you delete this XML file? You go back to the oh, default yeah. image. Yeah, you go to the default image. Excellent. So you can see that the post process uh, vignetting effect. So you can make it white, but it won't look nice. But I can make it like a little bit and change the shape of it. Like you see the midpoint, uh, mm -hmm. I can even focus more on the midpoint. And the roundness, I can make it like a square also. You see, I'm making it more a circle, yeah. square shape. Okay, likewise. And I can even give more feather or less feather. You can see that that's without feather. Mm. It's with feather. Do you notice it? No. On the down corner here. Okay. Oh. Okay. You see that there is no yeah. feather over there. Now if I increase the feather, you see that it's yeah. becoming blurred off. So when I increase the roundness, you can see that how it comes to work. Okay. Okay, so it gives you a different uh, effect on the picture. So it only people will be focused only on the face, on nowhere else. Then, so any mistake you make while taking the picture can be corrected okay. when you edit it. Yes. Uh, okay. Basically, um, when you take a picture, you don't have this idea. Okay, all these things you won't have an idea. When you put it on the computer on for Photoshop for post processing then you think all these ideas and try to implement it and see how it is. So what I do is like, okay, I, I'm not like, liking this uh, thing. Mm. So what I do is like, I go to the last configuration and I take a snapshot of this. Okay. And then I'll put it as first try. Okay, so and then I go back, I change a little bit more. I, I do the opposite side of it. I make it like a little bit, uh, okay. uh, the clarity and stuff and I come back here to the uh, thing and then reduce the noise over here and then I uh, come back to special effects put a, 
uh, in the other one over here a little bit slide and then I uh, do take another step of a second try. Now if I want to go back to the previous one, I didn't like this much, so I want to go back to the previous one, I click on the first try, I go to the previous one, a soft image comes in. And I go for the second try, I get a harder image comes in, this is my second uh, thing. Okay. So I either take suggestions from some people, like you know which one is good, stuff, and then just click on that one and click on open image. Both these tries will be written in this notepad. Uh, okay. okay, so that's how I can easily retrieve it uh, back to when I open the reopen this image and then process it. Okay, so now let's correct her skin by first uh, selecting her face. This is a select tool. There are so many tools in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Each one you will get to know when you start doing. This is the navigation tool. Okay. This is the selection tool for cutting a picture. Okay. Okay. Um, so you have Control C. You can only do two option. Uh, go back come forward go okay. back come forward go back come forward but what if um, I've done this mm -hmm. okay I have uh, like for example I have did a this is called healing mask this is basically the bandage symbol okay heals your location oh. okay so now Oh, I I, sh I don't want to remove that thing. Okay. I want to go back to that. But if I do Control Z, it only removes to there. Why not? Why you can't undo? We cannot go two, two three three back. Three back. Okay. So there is a history bar over here. Okay. There's a layer bar, uh, channel bar, path bar, and a history bar. So basically, uh, this comes from opening the picture to what till it what and now you did. Okay. Okay, and you have a history bar here also. Um, uh, here somewhere you have history bar where you mouse over it and then go back to the original location like that it can do. Okay, so likewise I can uh, be able to do that. See, I am able to increase this uh, size. size of this by holding this, uh, by uh, doing this uh, okay. curly brackets. Okay, so I, even I can heal her high level eyes also. It will take some time. Yeah, mm -hmm. like what? Okay, so I just uh, reduce it to the size and then remove. Yeah, oh. magic, right? So, likewise, I can mm. remove it using the healing brush. Okay. But remember, uh, when you are healing near this area, okay. Now healing brush takes a reference to the nearby object and then heals it. Oh, okay. That's how the logic works on. So okay. if I'm gonna heal this area, the nearby is our eyebrow. Black. You can see that at one point of time, I'll be able to re-simulate the eyebrow. You mm. see that this one? Oh yeah. Okay. So okay. to avoid that, huh? okay, you can use another button which is gonna, which is, see, as I said you, um, the healing button is gonna take reference of an existing subject and replace this as healing, right? Mm -hmm. What if I, I, we have a button where you tell what to take the reference of? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That what is the reference it is automatically taking by the healing button can be done manually. Yeah, so we have the, um, the stamp, you see the stamp? Okay. The stamp one. Uh, the stamp tool we call it the clone stamp tool. Okay. What it will do is basically is like in healing it might take up down anywhere automatically. But you say don't go down, go up by holding Alt. I'm clicking this. I'm targeting this location. So don't go down. Go up. up. Take it from here okay. and apply it over here. You can see that your thing is following you. You see the plus mark? Yeah. It's following you. So in that case, if I want to make her another eye, mm -hmm. you can sample that eye. See, I'm going to her eye location. I'm sampling her eye and then pasting it again. Uh. Sampling eye. <laughs> okay. You get it what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah? yeah. So basically what this means is that 
I can clone uh, from anywhere to anywhere. Yeah. Okay, you can use it for destructive purpose and as well as constructive purpose as well. Okay, you can use it for both reasons. Uh, but uh, but choose carefully what you wanna uh, you know uh, clone. clone up. Okay, it makes it should make sense and it should not look like a carbon copy. Okay. Mm. Like for example, uh, if you see the background, right? See, we majorly what we use cloning for is like the background edition. Like for example, um, you see the hair, right? So you wanna remove the hair, you use this cloning sample. Okay, so that makes it look neat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But you can do more uh, patient, then you will get a proper shape. So just deal with a proper shape. Mm. And likewise, you can do. So what are these uh, this lizards react? So is this effect getting? Yeah, I will tell. I will tell. I will tell. So you're asking me, right? Okay. For example, um, I have uh, got your drawing. For it, the price of the drawing is fifty thousand rupees, and um, uh, you wanna you wanna replicate the drawing. Mm. How would you do that? Picture. Do you wanna? You have the drawing here, mm. and you wanna replicate the same drawing without changing any detail. How would you do that? Because you're planning to give someone else the same thing, but not the same one, but the whatever you draw over it. You buy a paper which is very thin, and you can see the layer yeah, below that. It on it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you buy that paper, you put it on top of this drawing, and then draw that like that. You make them. You you afraid that uh, you completed half of the drawing. The next half is very complicated. Okay. Now, you don't want to screw up. Mm -hmm. Just because of this one complicated stuff, you don't want to screw up the entire drawing. So what would you do? You buy another paper and put on top of that, and you draw that complicated portion on this, the second layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then half of the complicated piece is yeah. over. Yeah. Then you, you don't want to screw that other half of it, so you buy another one and put on top of that, and you buy the rest of the half of the paper. Okay. And the disadvantage of this in real life is that it will be in three different papers. Three words, yeah. Yeah, that's the disadvantage. But in terms of the computer, all these three paper can be put together. put together, and you don't have to even spoil the original layer. That's the layer concept. Okay. So the disadvantage on real life is gone because it's just software and uh, it's done inside the computer. So all you have to do is like go to layers and you see the background layer. This is a permanent layer. This is the actual original copy of the picture. So what you do is like you want to make any modification of this particular one, you add a layer here. You know, you see that there is a uh, layer on applied on top of it. What it means is that uh, whatever the picture you're going to draw on top of this, mm. you're going to apply only on the top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever is in the bottom, it will not be affected. Now, how do you see the layer one only? by disabling the eye icon. Mm -hmm. What is on layer one? Nothing. nothing. You didn't do anything, so it's nothing. To see the layer one with the background, you're gonna see it like this. Okay, you wanna do any modifications, you can choose the background to do any modification, but it is locked, you cannot do any modifications here. I'm locking it. Yeah, you're locked, you're locked it. Okay, okay. So you unlock it and then you can able to modify, modify, it. modify it. So you have a lock button, you can lock it as okay. well. So now you go select the layer and do any changes in this. Then whatever the changes you apply will happen only on that layer, not on the original picture. Likewise, you can add multiple layers on top of it and make a picture. Now the, this what I'm telling you is for a new picture. Okay. This is already existing picture which was created. Now when I'm when I'm doing a do new design or something, then I'll be using that functionality. For example, uh, this uh, I can show you. Um, the, this is a folder where I put all my designs in. It's called the design folder. So all this uh, designs which is over here mm -hmm. has been designed by me. But these are in layers. 
I can show you one of the designs which is uh, done for this Aqua Zumba uh, poster. Now, I want you to tell me how many layers are here in this picture. Five? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Is it lesser than that? Hmm. Could you ask me that? So layers one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, oh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Again, sir. So what I've done is like each and every top of that I've placed a different stuff, different layers, okay, to make this whole picture come together. Oh, I didn't count that. Okay. Yeah, you see this box and everything yeah, yeah, over I here. Yeah, I didn't count all that. I just texted her and the so picture. Okay. I included text as one layer. So all yeah, text yeah. Text. Every time you create a text, we will create it as a separate, separate object or so layer. Move anywhere. Yes. Oh, if you put two texts together, then it will move bind it, and it will have to move it together. together. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that. Okay. You understand, right? So yeah. when you are creating a picture from the scratch, you need to add them as different layers so that you don't screw up multiple things or you don't have dependencies on everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, the best advantage of layer is like, I can move this layer to my other picture as well. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so for example, this Brookfield Mall uh, picture is there and I want to move that. So when I select the Brookfield Mall, I, I get to that uh, layer. So all I have to do is drag and drop that layer to my other thing and then put it uh, on my layer over here. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So that will be imported over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is this layer extension? Graphic or like an image only? It could be anything. And also we cannot store it as uh, a separate grid. We cannot store it as. We can store so it as a PSD file. Also. PSD file. Yeah, we can store it as a individual file. Also, see, we can um, export it convert this to a smart object, and we can store it as a separate layer. Oh. Separate file itself. Okay. So likewise, you can do. It. You can also export this layer. How do you put together the layers? Just uh, see. Uh, it's very simple. Okay. So we create a new, um, go to file, click on new design. Okay. Give a topic to the design, give a um, page size for the design. Normally we have A4, A3, mm -hmm. A, A2 yeah. sizes. So if you want to do in that way, you go to print and you have A4 size, A3 size, A5 size. So it depends on what kind of image you want and think about your image. First, uh, we, we do a normal diagram on the yeah. on the notepad and how the design should be where the picture should be where the advertisement should come. Normally we put the advertisements, the location name in the bottom. So that is no confusion. So you want the portrait or horizontal method of showing orientation. So you can see that horizontal method, portrait method of orientation and then select. Uh, normally we use this one. It's much easier. Okay. This is the first layer. Okay. Your original layer. Okay. okay. So in that, what you do is like you induce some shapes. So you have sh shapes from here. You can recall the shapes over here. Okay. You have a rectangle shape which you can cover over here, like this bottom. 
Okay. Okay, it's like using paint. Exactly, but it's more a little bit more complex, complex than that. Like, yeah. That's it. Um, so once you once you drew this, right? You can go to the select and then you can select this layer. You can resize this layer however you want this particular rectangle so it becomes a layer again. Do you understand? And also you can give properties to this layer. Now how I can give properties like I double click this. Okay. When I double click this, um, I just select it and then double click it. Okay. Now here I can uh, give a color to it. Like for example, um, this is the shadow. This is not the one. Uh, color overlay. And this is for the, the overall thing. Uh, I think you need to give a color over here like this. You see this one. There are two colors here: foreground and background color. Okay. Okay. So when you click on this one, you will get the get to select the color, and then you have the paint brush. Mm -hmm. Use the paint brush tool, and then uh, you need to um, um, you need to do this. Yeah, yeah. So you need to click on the paint brush and click on this, and then you might have to. Um, uh, that's it. That's all you need to do when you can see the color on the particular layer. So if you disable this, you will not be able to see it. See it. Okay. Yeah, so this is the background. Okay. okay. So likewise, you can create your own signature uh, for your um, company, uh, for your photography company. You can also create your own signature. And that is a tool for writing. Uh, there's a text tool. You can put this one. And uh, normally, I design Geek's idea photography, right? So I've written in something, right? So you can change the font. You just highlight it, just select all, and you can change the font size. Okay. You can first change it, increase it to a bigger size, and then uh, uh, select the font whichever you want. Whichever you like, okay? So there is some signs and other stuff. So these fonts are from uh, our from Photoshop. For Photoshop. From Photoshop. Because uh, the Microsoft moment has its own fonts, right? But it so won't be this many font. It yeah. doesn't have. See how much of font options you have. All English fonts. Once you decide that this is my my, my thing, mm -hmm. you can design your logo as well. But logo requires a little bit of, you know, drawing skill set. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at it, so I don't want to do that. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, once you design the this thing, you can go for a complete uh, no background thing also. Oh, okay. Like uh, you can remove the complete background. background. So I have created another video, but just tell you quickly how to remove the background is basically um, uh, by uh, the eraser tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, eraser tool is basically to erase pictures. Okay, it is anything. Okay, so if you select the eraser tool and um, you select the, uh, the rectangle one, you can only you select the background one, you can see that we're able to do erase the entire thing. Okay, oh, this okay. is the and normal you have just the image that you want. Yeah, correct. Okay. No, we don't need this. Okay, so now you know how to do that, yeah. right? Eraser, but there is a special option called background erase tool. Okay. okay. Select that and then click on the click on the picture. Oh, what did it do? It yeah, updated the, the background. So mm -hmm. okay, so basically that's what happens. So now you have uh, got this only this uh, thing. So what you can do is like you can crop this image. There's a cropping tool over here. So just uh, drag and drop this, drag and drop this to that level. Okay, and crop this. So all you get is this one. So just a little bit more forward. So you get only the name of the company, your company. Okay. This is, uh, this is a transparent image. 
this is transparent, right? Yeah, this is transparent. See, you need to export. Caps, you see the background. Yeah. Okay. See this this one. Got it. Here also is transparent because there is no background here. Okay. So now you cannot save it just like that. You need to export it as a PNG. Export it as you can click on this one. Okay. So once you click on this, you have to export it as PNG, and you need to enable transparency. Okay. And then click on export and then just uh, assign. Okay, so once you export it, uh, it's gonna go to your desktop. It will come like this, but when you see it like here, right, you will see only words. Okay, to confirm that this is transparent, you have any of the open images, what you can do is drag and drop this one onto that image. Top of this. Whoa, okay. You got it? Yeah. So, in this way, you will have your signature ready. Okay. So, if you are good in diagram, you can do the same thing. You can draw something and use the background erase tool to click on the background mm -hmm. and to erase whatever color related to the background. So, keep it as white so that you won't be confused. So, we can take an image. Mm -hmm. And then erase the background. Ah, yeah, like you can do that thing. also. Like for example, you like something on the on the internet. Mm, for example, you want to use this as your uh, as your image. So just save it to your desktop. Very simple. Just drag and drop to your yeah. Okay. And then click on background erase tool. Uh -huh. uh, you select magic eraser. So basically, it reduces everything. So that does it automatically. Yeah. And the other one, uh, we have to do it manually. Yeah, that uh -huh. this is background eraser tool, right? So. Okay. So likewise, if you have patience, you can do it manually also. There's no problem. Okay, then we can store it as an image. <laughs> it's magic, right? So <laughs> sometimes they'll it's <laughs> the image also. But um, it it's according to color, I guess. Yeah. So you can choose, uh, if you're color. not sure about this, what you can do is like you can select the quick selection tool and select it like this. You see that, right? Mm. Much easier. Uh, this okay so I've reduced it to this much and then what I do is it's hung it will take time Picasa too. You did it with? Picasa. Hello? Yeah? She has not reached. She has uh, stuck in the traffic. She called me and said me. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I will give you her number. You call her and talk to her? Yeah, I will text you her number. Thank you. Yeah, after she comes, once you, uh, I will be, I will be there at one, one fifteen something. Um, I'm not sure what time she will come, but uh, yeah, she is. She said like, please bear with me in just coming, traffic and other stuff. Okay, thanks. Bye.
So once you select this region, right, you have the courtesy of doing anything with it. Like you can increase the brightness, okay. contrast, black and white. They can make this portion black and white also. You have the liberty of doing anything with that. Including, you can select options like uh, eraser tool. Mm -hmm. uh, magic eraser. What? No, 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 no. Um, the, you don't need to use any eraser tool. All you have to do is like um, right click and uh, um, you can uh, cut Ooh. this layer. Oh. You get it? Okay. So now, if I don't see this, Mm. Oh. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now what I can do is like, and I can remove this layer into the trash bin. Mm. Now all I see this is one. Okay, but this will so be now black, right, right? this will be black, black as yeah. you said. So if you use the magic erase tool, remove it. Okay. But that again is giving us a problem. So what you can do is uh, go to file, export, export as and then go to PNG trans, uh, transparency and then go to desktop save it and get this transparent image and just check if it's transparent or not I guess we need to manually remove that uh, background. No, 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 no. I'll tell you. Um, that's that. In this quick selection, what we did, we cut it as a layer, right? Mm. Layer. And what happened is like, uh, we got that hand, mm. and there was a. Um, mm. Wait, lens. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I got so I'll show you. Huh, what did you get? You got only the image and you didn't get the hand or anything else. See, right? now Holding in it. this layer, this the is background. background. This is background, this is nothing, right? But uh, this one had something, right? That's the problem, right? When we exported this, this black color came in this. Mm -hmm. Now, I went back. Mm -hmm. Is there any way I can do it opposite? Yeah, you select. So and select inverse. Yeah. When I do select inverse, and then I right click and I say layer we are cut, right? And then now I see, mm. I remove this and you see this one yeah. over background. All I have to do is like inverse select, so inverse go inverse. opposite, and then you get this one and that one without. Now, if you go to that picture, you'll be able to see mm. blackness here. Okay. So now what I do. I remove the lock, I delete this layer, and I use this layer, I go to file, export, export as, <laughs> replace it, go back to my original picture, drag and drop. Mm, okay. Okay. Just now what you do is like you write something below this or side of this and do anything you want. Okay, and uh, you can re resize this. You can hold shift for a s perfect size. Yeah. If you do, it's called free transformation where you can make it like this. Mm. But the picture won't be, the quality will be switched. So hold shift and you'll be able to do it correctly. Okay, just a minute. Okay, any questions? So this is for shop. Okay, Lightroom on the other hand is basically um, uh, it's a different tool. So using Lightroom, you can do bulk editing. I will show you; it's already loaded inside that. So uh, on that first session, I told you right. I mm -hmm. don't know uh, this thing. What kind of setting you uh, use to get this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. I will show you two three of my friends click and I'm not sure how of course it is post edited but uh, mm, let's see.
so uh, so this kind of English it is like through like uh, mm. these so it's like bulk edited or through no, Photoshop. It's a Photoshop. See the um, added layers. See uh, no no no. no? This is like a normal editing. See, okay. they have taken a picture like this. Okay. They remove the shadows to give you this bright yes. image. Okay. Mm -hmm. This bright. Mm -hmm. Here they would have selected and removed the shadows there. Okay. 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 Another thing is like they would have added some effect in that. Mm -hmm. Like example, uh, they would have uh, done a little bit more lightings and other stuff. They would have more increased uh, specific uh, colors. Like I did that over there. So we can make it like this. Um, all of the pictures I've edited um, mm, 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 mm. okay so where is it um, I don't know where I put it, um, but we have um, this is the YouTube channel I was talking about. Okay. Um, we have one session where we edited uh, the picture. You see this? I I keep uh, placing my files somewhere, so I keep searching for it all the time. All the so. Yeah. 